Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, we have a couple people, we have a few people um, popping up still, but uh, we'll start tonight's uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Yulia Marcinkowski, and I'm the Executive Director for Ukrainian Canadian Congress, Alberta Provincial Council. And uh, I have with me today Griselle uh, Flores, Direction uh, Directions for, immigration, uh, for Immigrants from Calgary. Um, we're here in Edmonton, um, but we're hoping that the topics we discuss relate to uh, people across Alberta. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick introduction my, uh, what our organization does. So Ukrainian Canadian Congress, uh, Alberta Provincial Council is a, is a nonprofit umbrella organization that serves the Ukrainian community. Our membership, uh, uh, we have 19 member organizations and they uh, come from all sorts of different paths uh, and they represent uh, the community from every little aspect. And uh, we're there to support and promote and make sure that uh, Ukrainian voices are heard. Uh, our co uh, co hosts for these webinars, unfortunately, we couldn't have uh, we couldn't have Ivana uh, do do her presentation today. But Ukrainian Canadian Social Services, and uh, I'll just say a few things in Ukrainian. I I think because this relates um, mostly to Ukrainian folks, so I'll say that in Ukrainian. So Suspirna Služba Ukrainci v Kanada це є громадська добродійна непробуткова організація, яка діє в Едмонтоні ще з 77 го року. Ця організація надає дуже багато чудових побутових послуг або відповідів на запитання, такі як посилання нових іммігрантів, інформація про медичне та соціальне забезпечення, інформації про навчальні системи, допомога старшим та немічним інвалідам, особливо відносно федеральних програм, пенсійні забезпечення, допомога в оформленні різноманітних прохань та подання документів до основних урядових відділів, допомога в випадку крайньої потреби, а також тлумачення документів та усні переклади, що є дуже важливо для наших, наших іммігрантів, для тих, хто сюди переїхали нещодавно. Ці всі послуги є безкоштовні, ви можете звернутися в Суспільну службу, і вони будуть раді вам допомогти. Наразі... Потрібно зателефонувати наперед, щоб домовитися про зустріч, але, будь ласка, звертайтеся, я залишу їхню інформацію. Я це надішлю потім після вебінару для всіх, хто зареєструвався. Я хотіла також сказати, що Суспільна служба надає допомоги зараз під час пандемії, якщо ви є в скрутній фінансовій ситуації. І також, я знаю, з придбанням медикаментів, якщо, якщо ви маєте за рецептом. Тому, будь ласка, звертайтеся до них. Вони є нашою одною з наших організацій, організацій членів Конгресу українців Канади тут в Альберті, і ми намагаємося додати, розширити наші послуги і допомогти людям так, як ми можемо. So uh, today we're going to talk about how to become licensed or approve your education, foreign education here in Alberta. So the disclaimer would be it's Alberta related. So you have to keep that in mind as much as we can say that some of them probably will relate to other provinces, but we're talking about Alberta specific um, requirements. So Grizel here will tell us a little bit more about the directions for immigrants. And then um, what is the, the purpose of this webinar is to empower people, uh, give them the, the opportunity to um, use the build knowledge, the experience, the education that the years that they've spent and then hopefully integrate them into the society here in Alberta and give them an opportunity to work in that field. And sometimes it may seem like it's discouraging because things take time. Sometimes it is just getting your certification, you know, approved, translated, and you're good to go. Sometimes we talk about these, uh, you know, bridging programs and all these other pieces that seem so complicated. After you get that assessment, it's the path, it's just sometimes a beginning. But I think something to keep in mind, and I felt that myself as, a, as an immigrant too, um, we're talking about two years of your life, maybe maybe a year of your life. It depends on the profession, but then it's a lifelong opportunity to explore and work in the field that you're passionate about, uh, that you know so much about. And that's, that's sort of where we're going with this. Uh, I want to say, if you have questions, please feel free to ask them. If uh, the speaker feels like, okay, this is a good question to ask right after this particular topic, please do so. Uh, you can just put it in the chat. You can also put it in the Q&A and I'll read them out loud. Um, or you can keep them till the end. Do you feel like if, if you feel like you want to answer or the answer relates to this right away, then please do ask that question. Uh, you can certainly ask it in Ukrainian if you're not sure how to, how to ask that in English. 
and I'll do my best. I'll translate it, and then uh, if and I'll translate that back into Ukrainian as much as we can. We won't try. To, we will not keep people long here. I promise. We'll go through an hour, and it. I will not keep people any longer. It will be eight o'clock. Um, so if there are any questions, you can definitely then email me later, and then I'll try to get some support from Grizel, hopefully, and uh, she can help us. So now, please, Grizel, welcome, and uh, let's get started. Okay, thank you very much, Yulia, and thank you um, for this uh, fantastic opportunity to, to present um, on a very, very cold night here in, in, in Alberta, in Calgary, and uh, as well in Edmonton. Um, so uh, thank you for the opportunity. So I'll briefly introduce myself. Um, thank you, Mia. My name is Grisel Flores. The Spanish accent that you hear is originally from, I am originally from Venezuela. Uh, for those of you who are not very familiar, it is a small country in South America. The neighbors are uh, Brazil and Colombia. So um, I do come from a, from a warm country. <laughs> Um, and uh, I like to share that I have uh, survived, happily survived uh, almost 13 winters by now. <laughs> so yeah, so that's where I come from. And um, my background, my professional background is in communications. Most of my career has been in, in uh, communications, public relations, promotion in the um, career development field and also in the, in the um, uh, post-secondary education field as well, and also for the, in general, for the education. So um, uh, just to give you a heads up how I'm gonna be um, presenting, I am gonna be moving between the PowerPoint that I uh, uh, brought for you. Um, also, um, we're gonna be visiting the Directions for Immigrants website, and also uh, we're gonna be, uh, uh, chatting, you know, Yulia and I would like you to, to ask questions and to, to um, make comments if you're, you're more than welcome to do so. So please well, bear with me as I move between these places, between the PowerPoint and the Zoom and the website. So let's get started um, with the PowerPoint. So I'm gonna uh, share my screen and I'm gonna go ahead with the PowerPoint. I'm gonna go to the first slide and start the presentation. Can you can you see it well, Yulia? Excellent. Thank you. So yeah, the the uh, the main goal of this of this presentation is uh, navigate your job search and accreditation process with us. Um, uh, how directions for immigrants can help you. Um, if you are an internationally educated professional looking for a job or planning to become licensed in Canada. Uh, this is great that you're joining this presentation, this webinar, um, because we can help you uh, give you, we can give you guidance for your, for your licensing exams, for your accreditation process. Um, okay, so what are we going to be covering tonight? So the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to be sharing with you what are uh, the services at Directions for Immigrants, who do we help, how do we help people, uh, then we're going to move on to what are those steps that uh, you need to achieve uh, your, your career goals. And I'm going to be um, covering then the study groups. Directions for Immigrants is well known in the community for the study groups, the exam preparation study groups. Then I'm going to be sharing some tips for success. Then uh, there's some, of, some of the statistics, some of the numbers that um, we have, we have uh, accomplished in the last um, few years that we have been helping immigrant professionals and a success story. So uh, that's the plan for tonight. Um, and before we go on, um, I would like to do a little interactive activity. And um, as Julia said, it's very optional. Um, if you like, you can, enter it on the chat box, or you can also um, open up your microphone and, and say it. I would like, oh, um, you know what? Why don't we skip the, what is your occupation from outside of Canada? I, um, let's skip that because uh, uh, Julia, in, in the process of organizing this webinar, she did share with, with me the occupations uh, that you guys uh, brought from outside of Canada. So don't worry about the answering the question number one. Let's focus on question number two. Who was the first person that you asked questions related to your job search 
and or your accreditation in Canada. So yeah, so as I said, don't worry about answering the first question. I do have that information. Thank you, Yulia, for that. So if you can please um, enter on the chat box or open up your microphone and share with us who was that first person that you spoke about or you asked questions about, how do I find a job in Canada? How do I get my license um, in my profession? How do I become accredited? How do I become certified in my profession? So um, yeah, so I'm gonna try to uh, look at the chat box here. All right, I'm, because I'm sharing my screen, then it's a little bit tricky to see the chat box. I can <laughs> let you. I can let you know. I don't have anything just yet, so maybe we'll just give okay. it a couple minutes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Give people so a minute to type it in if they have. Uh, sure. Uh, you can also put it. You can also put it uh, anonymously into the Q and A. You can just put your if you don't feel comfortable talking from yourself, you can definitely put it anon anonymously into the Q and A box, and I'll just I can just read that out. That would be that would work well too. Yeah, and so the the main idea is to discuss how or or to chat a little bit about how when we are new in Canada or maybe not so new, um, we we tend to try to find answers everywhere, right? And we tend to talk to people. Um, about uh, our doubts, uh, how uncertain we feel about what are the next steps for our future in Canada. Yeah, it's often, I think, for myself, it was the, the closest friend. And then they say, oh, yeah, you can just do this and that. But if they're not in the same situation as you, they may not be best suited to answer that question. Uh, right? Absolutely. So we have yeah. one of the people, yeah, so there was a Catholic social, uh, Catholic services where I also did my English test. Okay, very good. Excellent. So yeah, thank you for entering that that answer. And yes, you as, as you just said, it is very easy just to um, talk to a friend or talk to somebody who has gone through uh, the licensing process. And uh, that is something that I would like to point out today that uh, your situation is absolutely unique. Uh, your story, your circumstances are completely unique to you. And that's the reason why it is highly important that you access the right information and, and you obtain the up-to-date information from the right sources of information. Because for example, somebody who went through the licensing process in your same profession may have done it a year ago or two years ago and the licensing, the licensing uh, association may have changed um, the, the rules of the game. That's right. right. We have, yeah, someone also mentioned that IQAS is a, would be, is it a good place to go forward with? Oh, can you say that again, please? IQAS, the mm -hmm. International Qualifications Assessment uh, that Services. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a very good example. Um, and, and again, this is just an example. For uh, If you are an internationally educated engineer, um, you do not necessarily need to have your documents um, assessed by IQAS, by IQAS, if you are planning to become a PEng, a professional engineer, a, 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 yeah, a professional engineer. You in, instead, you would need to go through an organization called WES, and then WES would be submitting your, your documentation to, to APEGA. But I don't want to um, spend too much time on that. This is just an example of how, uh, if you don't know exactly what is your end goal, what is the that end point that you where you would like to arrive, you may be um, taking steps that are not necessarily leading you into into that direction. And so, Grisel, can we have someone? Someone was asking. If someone raised their hand. Can we mm -hmm. let them say uh, just answer the question live? Absolutely, yes. Yes, we have. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing properly I'm this gonna, one. I'm just going to pause my share for a minute so that I can I can maybe. Um, hi, I'm all ears. Yeah, hi. Hi, you. Uh, yes, you raised yes. your hand. Did you have something to say or ask? Yeah, about this, this, yeah this is this one. It's it's uh, like I just saw the chat box. It says, it's, uh, my chat box says uh, disabled. So I don't know why it shows oh. that. Um, okay. And so, Let me, I'll ch okay, I'll, I'll check that. Do you okay. have any questions? Do you have a comment about this uh, particular question? Uh, not what was for the 
Okay. Actually, I was giving for the answer for the like the one you asked me, who was the first person. So I was just going to give that on the chat, but I couldn't. The chat wasn't working, so that's why I just raised hand. That so. That's okay. Do you mind sharing with us uh, who was that first person that you talked to about your job search or your licensing process? Yeah, that the person was in uh, employment counselor. Yes. And, uh, it, uh, it was immigrant service category. Yes. Very yeah. good. Okay, excellent. That is good. I uh, that is very good that most people are uh, who are new and not so new in Canada uh, know about the the agencies that serve immigrants, and that is a great place to start, right? Uh, to talk to people who are in the field of of helping immigrants. So that that's fantastic. Okay, very good. Um, I'm gonna uh, move on. So I'm gonna go back to sharing the PowerPoint. Um, and so I'm going to go uh, to resume my share. Okay, very good. Can you see my PowerPoint? Very good. Okay, so next slide. Um, the next slide is what are the services or directions for immigrants? Who do we help and how do we help? Um, and here I'm gonna uh, highlight that uh, the very, very first step to access the services at Directions for Immigrants is to give us a call um, on, the, uh, on the website. You can find our contact information. I will also make sure that we enter that information on the chat box um, on this webinar. And so uh, I, I just wanted to highlight that, that the very first step is to uh, give us a call or send an email and indicate that you would like to speak with a career coach. And uh, we're gonna help you set up an appointment to have a conversation with a career coach. Okay, so what are the services at Directions for Immigrants? Who do we help and how do we help? So in one sentence, Directions for Immigrants is a no cost career service center that helps immigrant professionals achieve two main goals. Goal number one, the employment goal. Uh, looking for employment. Goal number two, accreditation, licensing. If, you are, if your occupation is regulated in Alberta, regulated in Canada. And so the services are at no cost, given that we are funded by the government of Alberta, the provincial government, and uh, by the federal government, the government of Canada. And we are managed by Bow Valley College. So Bow Valley College is the, is the institution that manages the center. And uh, we, we help um, any internationally educated professional. Now, who is considered an internationally educated professional? Number one, if you have a degree, a certificate, a diploma, or even a trade certificate from outside of Canada, that uh, means that you have post-secondary education from, from your home country, and that means that you are considered an internationally educated professional. Um, another answer to the question, who do we help? Um, anybody who is legally able to work in Canada. Um, once you come to the appointment, you have that conversation with a career coach, we will determine if you are considered an eligible client and usually, um, if you meet the eligibility requirements, you are a permanent resident and uh, or sorry, or a Canadian citizen. Usually you can have access to the, the, the full spectrum of services. Now, if you have a work permit, if you have a, a work permit and you're still legally able to work in Canada, we, we can still uh, have a conversation with you. We can have an appointment with you to give you some guidance. Now the access to the full spectrum of services may be limited given that you have um, a, a work permit in, in Alberta. Uh, um, yeah, an open work permit. And um, uh, finally, uh, a, a person who lives in, in Alberta, in, in the Calgary area, but you know, in this new world, uh, we, we can appreciate that uh, uh, Things are changing. So even if you live, you know, in, in, in Edmonton or in other areas in Alberta, um, we may be able to help you. We will always double check that you um, have accessed the services available in your area, within your city. And finally, how do we help? 
Well, we help um, in a variety of ways and I am gonna move from here to the website. Um, and also I'm gonna um, quickly jump to the, uh, to the uh, direct, uh, service, the study groups. So I'm gonna leave the PowerPoint and I'm going to share uh, the uh, website. Give me one second here. Okay. So yes, the chat box should now be fixed. It was okay. uh, excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yes, um, can you please tell me if you can see the directions for immigrants website? Nope, still the PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Um, how do we undo this? If you're sharing just the screen or if you're sharing a window, right? It depends if you were just sharing. Uh, let me just go to the, I'm going to click again. Am I there now we go. on the website? That's Excellent. Right. Thanks for your help. <laughs> okay, very good. So this is the directions for immigrant website. Um, I am going to scroll all the way down to where you will find our contact information. You can see here the phone, the toll free, and also the email. So as I said, the very first step is to give us a, a call or send us an email and say, can I have an appointment with a career coach? Okay, I wanted to show you our contact information and now I'm gonna go to um, how do we help? So we help in um, many ways and I'm gonna start with the, the, one of the main goals why clients come to our center, find a professional job in Canada. How do we do that? We, you come to the center and you, um, if you are considered an eligible client, then you're gonna have access to multiple one-on-one -on -one career coaching sessions. Uh, and here I'm gonna um, stop for a little bit in, in the sense that I'm gonna um, ask you guys, um, can you please uh, tell me one thing that a soccer coach would be doing uh, for the soccer players? And, and this, is, this is something that I'm asking so that I can um, lead into the role of the career coach and the role of the job seeker. So if anyone um, would like to um, <laughs> dare to share with me, when you think about a soccer coach and a soccer player, what is the role of the soccer coach? What, would, what, what is one thing that the, career, the soccer coach is gonna be helping the, the soccer player with? If you can enter it on the chat box or if you want to open up your mic, either way. Not just yes. I just wanted to ask what people were thinking about that of some of uh, training him and motivating this, right? Okay, very good. <laughs> Excellent. Any other? Uh, use their skills in the best mm -hmm. way. Very good. That's true. I'm going to write down your answers because they are. Excellent. <laughs> okay, very That's good. Right. Yeah, if you see any other, feel free to interrupt uh, Julia and, and tell me um, another idea that people shared with us. <laughs> very good. So that is something that um, I, I usually like to do that exercise because that gives you a good idea of what Someone also said, sorry, yeah, I just wanted to ahead. translate yes. into uh, from Ukrainian to English that just the person sees the full picture and can coordinate the process. Yeah, excellent, full picture, very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Coordinate the process. <laughs> Thank you, very good. And so that's um, that's a, pretty much what you would expect from the career coach, right? Um, when you when you have that conversation with the career coach, the career coach is going to help you. Uh, develop a, a, an action plan to help you move forward with your career goals, right? And, and be ready because the conversation that you're going to have with a career coach may be a tough conversation. In the same way that a soccer coach will have to talk to that soccer player and, and say how much um, training it is required for them, right? In the same way that uh, the, the soccer coach is going to say the skills that that soccer player needs to obtain or improve the same way the career coach is going to be having that conversation with you. 
And um, it's a very, it's a good approach, right? Because then we kind of, we will focus on, on both things. We'll have that honest conversation about where can we take this, but it is certainly still a place where we can say, uh, this is what you have, and this is where you can take yourself with what you have, or, you know, this is your potential, right? And this is where you can work towards. Exactly. Thank you for saying that, Julia, because that is what, what it's going to be. It's going to be an honest conversation. And I don't want you guys to have um, the wrong expectations. Um, we, the, the career coach or directions for immigrants, we, we are not going to give you employment. We're not going to give you a job. We are going to exactly what you said. Uh, the career coaches are going to help you find that motivation that you need to take the steps that you need to move forward, especially during these days when, you know, the pandemic has changed um, the lives for all of us. And, and for many of us, it's, it's hard to find the motivation sometimes, uh, especially with the uncertainty that it's uh, surrounding us. The career coach is going to help you find that motivation identify those skills that you have and how to how to um, improve those skills and have the full picture. That, that's a, a very good comment because the, the same way the soccer coach draws the game plan for those soccer players, in the same way the, the career coach is gonna draw um, the, the plan for you. How, how much time and how much effort is gonna be required from you um, to in order to move forward. So, so uh, mm -hmm, I just wanted to kind of, I just wanted to kind of jump in and I, do, I want to make sure we have enough time to move the questions yes. in at the end if we have them. So how do we move into that? So once we had this conversation and then uh, what are some of the some of the steps that you say a person would then take if you were to go through the process of uh, trying to verify your education or approve your education or get that licensing? Like what would be then those steps? Yeah, the next steps. Yeah, very good. So I'll, I'll dive into that in a, in a minute. And so I'm just going to uh, quickly go through the services. So the, the multiple career coaching sessions, right? And so the first step is understanding the accreditation process for your profession. That is going to be part of your conversation if your occupation is regu regulated. Developing a job search action plan, practicing interview questions, uh, mentoring opportunities. So these are just a few of the topics that you're going to have um, uh, as conversation with the career coach, and it's not going to be just one conversation. Understanding your licensing process in Canada, right? We're, we're going to be um, uh, drawing that for you. How to become a more effective job seeker, and that includes um, a variety of workshops that we offer. I am not going to mention all of them. I just want to show you maybe three out of the many that we have. Uh, the job search strategies workshop, how to network workshop, LinkedIn, right? Maybe you need to enhance your LinkedIn profile. So that's just um, uh, 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 that's just a list of three workshops of the many that we offer. Um, uh, the improve my communication, um, my, my communication, my communication skills. And so we we offer a couple of groups. One is to improve your communication skills for businesses, and another one is exclusively for healthcare professionals. And I understand we have quite a few um, um, in the classroom today, if I remember right. We have a doctor, we have a, a biologist, we have a, a medical laboratory technologist. So yeah, it, uh, the, we have a, a clear communication specifically for healthcare professionals. You can also find out more uh, once you, you talk to the career coach or you can also explore more here on, the, on this website. Prepare for my licensing exams. I'm going to be talking about that in a minute. And we also connect with employers in the sense that we um, invite company representatives to come and do presentations for our clients. Those are not recruiting sessions. Those are information sessions. So I just showed you very br briefly how do we help um, uh, clients, right? Now, I am going to go back to the PowerPoint. And I'm going to go exactly into the how do I become licensed? How, how do I even um, start? So um, can you please, Julia, let me know if I am sharing the PowerPoint? No? OK, let me just pause Not that. Yet. And then stop sharing. And then I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint.
Am I on the PowerPoint? Yep. Okay, very good. So what are the steps uh, you need to take to continue your job search, start your job search or the accreditation process? Okay, so if you guys are uh, similar to me in the sense that I, I like to write um, things, right? Being a communication professional, I'm constantly writing notes. This is a good idea. This is a good moment to start writing notes because I'm gonna be um, uh, giving you some tips uh, prior to that conversation with the career coach and also what do I need to take into consideration uh, to become licensed in my, in my profession? So the first thing you need to ask yourself is where am I today, right? What is my current situation? Um, where, where, are, where am I right now? Um, how far am I from studying my accreditation process? Some of you may have already submitted your accreditation, your, your, your credentials to the professional association that regulates uh, your occupation. Or some of you may be uh, in the process of considering whether or not I should be uh, taking that step of submitting my, my documents to the, to the professional association, right? Step number two, um, what are the English language requirements for you to become a fully licensed professional, right? Um, I know that we have quite a few of, uh, regulated occupations in the room today, in the classroom today. So um, I wonder if you have looked at the English language level required in order to become a fully licensed um, accountant, for example, right? And so just, just to use a number as an example, from, for many of those uh, professional associations, one of the requirements is submitting uh, the IELTS test or the TOEFL test as a, as a requisite to prove your English language proficiency. If that is the case, then um, uh, the, if the level, the required level is seven, for example, or even eight, then where are you today? Um, are you sitting at level six? Are you sitting at level seven? Are you already at level eight? And you can start um, already with the process. So if the English language level is one of the areas, right? One of the skills, and remember we were talking about the soccer coach that is gonna help the, the soccer player improve their skills, then very likely the career coach is gonna be highlighting improving your English language level as the, as the priority of the skill you need to work on to get yourself moving forward, right? Um, so I, I, we, we touched on where are you today, then English language requirements, then I'm gonna move on to the exams. Um, do you have a complete understanding of the exams that you need to take in order to become a fully licensed professional? I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, some of the pharmacists who come to our center have to take three main licensing exams. And this is a process that for some people, as Yulia was saying in the beginning, for some people, it may take two years. Other, for other people, it may take three years. For other people, it may take four years, right? It, it all depends on the life circumstances. Mm -hmm. If we look at a physician, um, a, a fully licensed physician, it may take up to four and five years. And um, we, at Directions for Immigrants, we work with those clients for as long as our clients need us to reach those career goals. So I'll give you an example. We can work with, an, with a professional who is in a non-regulated occupation. Let's pick, a, 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 for example, the IT profession, which is in high, demand, in high demand these days with everybody working remotely and technology advancing at a very high speed then we, a career coach, can work with that IT professional for a short time, maybe a couple of months, maybe three months, maybe four months, and that person finds a job. And that's where the game plan, where the job search plan ends. Or our career coaches can work for as long as four years and five years with our clients who are um, usually a very, who are especially in the healthcare field because the, the licensing process for a healthcare professional is much longer and more complicated. Now, we, we understand that those are people who are highly motivated. Those are people who are highly focused on doing whatever it takes in order to um, become a fully licensed professional. 
So where are you today? What are your language skills? What are the exams that you need to take? And then the fourth step would be, what are my academic credentials, right? Is, is my post-secondary education degree or diploma or certificate, how is it considered here? And uh, remember when uh, Julia read one of your comments, is it IQAS, the right institution to, um, to assess your documents? Maybe yes, depending on your occupation, right? And maybe that is the first step. Or is it West uh, uh, in Ontario, the institution that needs to be assessing your documents and not IQAS? And so I don't want you to feel overwhelmed right now. <laughs> Uh, the, the opposite. I want you to know that the career coach can help you figure out what is the first step for me uh, uh, to take my academic credentials. Where do I need to submit them and how do I submit them, right? Then the next step is your work experience. Sometimes uh, the professional associations need to see your work experience. Some other professional associations do not need to see your work experience. Instead, they need to see that you have the competencies required um, in Canada to perform that job. I'll give you an example. Quite a few years ago, APEGA, the organization that regulates the engineering profession, was asking for the work experience from candidates in order to understand, to, to assess uh, their work experience. Now, um, it, from, I would say maybe, I think three years ago, APEGA made a big change moving from the work experience component to a competency-based assessment process. And as I said, a friend of yours may have gone through the process a couple of years ago, three years ago, and now if it's yourself, then you need to understand that what are those competencies and how do I prove that I have them? We can help you with that, right? Um, also, um, what is my personal situation? That is the next step. Um, um, do, what, is, what are my commitments with my family at the moment? Are you working at a transitional job to pay your bills? Are you currently studying, right? Um, one of the things that the career coach is gonna help you with is to look at your, at your uh, time, at your, at your schedule, because we're looking at, a, at a, making a, a, a commitment with yourself. And then the, um, the, the last three steps that I want you to look at is also monitoring your health, your physical health, your emotional health, right? Um, your finances, if your finances, money, it's a, it's a problem. That is another conversation you can have with a career coach. There are resources available, uh, micro loans for immigrant professionals, for example, there are quite a few organizations that offer this service. And if there are any courses that you need to take in order to move forward with your, with your career goals. So those are some of the steps. For those of you who are note takers like myself, I hope that you, you were able to, to take notes of all the things you need to consider and all the steps you need to take. And I'm gonna move on to the, um, the study groups. Um, Directions for Immigrants is very well known in the community for the study groups that we offer for immigrant professionals. Um, we help them prepare for the accreditation exams and employment success um, according to the exam syllabus. The study groups are facilitated by uh, a professional who is licensed in the field. Um, as I said to you, I'm gonna move back to the, to the uh, website, right? And um, are you guys being able to see my website? No, okay, I'm gonna pause the share. <laughs> It looks like I have to do a, a full stop sharing and then I sh click share again. Am I on the website now? Thank you, Julia. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the study groups. You do not need to remember um, any of this. I just want you to uh, guide you where to find uh, the information, directions for immigrants, and then you click on um, study groups. And then you will find a long list of study groups. Uh, you don't need to remember the names of those. I just, I'm just gonna briefly mention the occupations for which we offer study groups for at the moment. So we offer the study groups of, uh, uh, for the licensing exams required for engineers and geoscientists, for medical laboratory technologists. I think we have a person in the room who is a medical laboratory technologist for doctors, right, physicians, 
We also offer uh, study groups the five, for the five different exams required by lawyers for, inter for internationally trained lawyers and also for pharmacists. Now, before I explain a little bit of what the study groups are, um, I want for those of you who are in a regulated occupation and you do not see study groups uh, here on, at Directions for Immigrants, that does not mean that we cannot help you. Uh, something I was uh, chatting with, with Yulia before when, when we were planning this webinar um, is that at Directions for Immigrants, we can help any immigrant professional in any occupation from A to Z, from an internationally educated agrologist to a zoologist. <laughs> so uh, if you are a psychologist or uh, why don't I take a look at the list that uh, Yulia provided if you are an accountant and if you are an HR professional, right? Um, and you are looking into becoming a, a licensed professional, like, sorry, you want to get your accreditation, for example, as a certified professional accountant, or you want to get your HR certification, we are able to support you, right? We can, we can guide you um, in terms of, do I need uh, to apply for micro loans for, for, uh, for the financial help to move forward with my, to pay for my exam fees, for the membership fees? I, I understand and I acknowledge that um, joining the professional associations means that you have to pay the association fees, the membership fees, right? And so that is something that a career coach can help you with. And also the career coach can help you develop a study plan. And now that I say study plan, um, for those of you who were um, asking, okay, how do, I, how do I prepare for my, how do I become licensed, right? I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint um, and because uh, I'm gonna be asking you again to take notes. <laughs> um, am I on the PowerPoint? Great, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, okay. So when you are uh, preparing to write an, a licensing exam, um, these are the many things you would need to consider. And I'm just giving you a heads up of what the career coach is gonna be doing with you, the exercise that the career coach is gonna be doing with you. The, uh, when you're preparing to become accredited licensed, Number one, you need to be prepared. You need to know that you are embarking into the project, into the mission of uh, committing yourself to uh, taking those exams and, and being successful at them, right? You're gonna have to develop a study action plan with your career coach. That includes the number of hours that you're gonna be committing to attending the study group if you are, or if you're not attending a study group, uh, uh, committing to the number of hours that you will dedicate to your studies. Um, you're gonna have to uh, uh, commit to staying healthy, right? You need to know that you need to stay physically healthy, emotionally healthy, mentally healthy, so that you are um, strong to continue into this commitment. You're gonna have to, and, and this is also going to be part of your conversation with, with any of my colleagues at Directions for Immigrants. They're gonna ask you um, uh, what would be the impact of making significant adjustments to your personal um, and work schedule, right? Because when you look at uh, the current number of hours that you spend uh, going to work, um, uh, Taking, uh, taking after, looking after your family, uh, doing the house chores, right? Um, communicating with family who is who is overseas. When you when you look at the number of hours that you have left for your study, it's it's, it's probably not not enough. And any of my colleagues, the career coaches at Directions for Immigrants, are going to tell you that you would need to commit to a, a minimum of thirty hours per week to study for your licensing exam. Um, you're going to have to um, also stay positive because they, there are going to be many times in which you're going to doubt and you're going to ask yourself, did I make the right choice? Did I make the right commitment when I said that I was going to pursue my licensing process in Canada? This is too hard. This is too tough. This requires way too much energy of myself. I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. So you're going to have to find ways to stay positive. Um, you're going to also have to be 
reflective on the feedback that you will be getting constantly from your facilitators if you're enrolled in a study group and also from the career coaches. You're gonna to have to learn how to ask for help when you, when you need it. You're gonna to have to speak up, I need help, I, I'm, I'm stuck in this chapter or I am stuck in this competency that I need to prove. And also you're gonna to have to be ethical and, and a team player. In, in Canada, um, ethics are highly, highly important when you, when you work in a profession and you're gonna to have to practice being ethical and, and a good team player. So those are the, uh, the, the, the tips that I can share with you, the steps that you would need to take in order to become a, a licensed professional in your field. Um, what are the benefits of joining the study group and ha what happens after you completed? Where ba basically um, you are gonna be committed to yourself, right? Uh, you're gonna be uh, obtain having access to up-to-date quizzes and up-to-date um, practice questions clinical exams, um, if, if uh, you're a healthcare professional, um, you're gonna be also developing your own self-learning um, and evaluation. You're gonna have peer support and you're gonna be developing a lot of the critical thinking skill that is so required um, in Canada as a professional. After you complete a group or after you, yeah, you commit yourself to, to, to taking those exams, you will, expect it to, you will be expected to write the exam. So, um, Chriselle, when you when you go through these study groups right now during the the pandemic, I'm assuming that uh, I'm just assuming that it's not happening in person. Is that is that so? Are these groups happening online? How do people still pursue yeah. this step? Yeah, uh, thank you for asking that question. It was a massive um, uh, amount of work when the pandemic hit. We had to move um, many, many things to uh, re the virtual world. And yes, uh, short answer, all the study groups are being currently offered um, through online delivery. Yes. That's excellent. That's really nice, especially for people that are not necessarily uh, you know, that close to Calgary, that they could still participate in these discussions because there's so much value uh, yeah, in, yeah. in participating absolutely. in that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you for asking that question because um, it, it was, it, it was a, a, a lot of work and, and we were able to transfer everything online. And uh, we are seeing that many people are actually even, even more committed, right? There, there's no excuse. Uh, not, not you're home, to you're home, you just have to, you have to join. You don't have to drive anywhere. It's right there in front of you. Yes, you have to show up. <laughs> That's right. That's Yes. <laughs> so and we so, have just about 10 minutes left a little bit. Okay. Do you think, okay. that, uh, can we get into some of those? Uh, I just want to give people an opportunity to either ask a few extra questions or do you want to go through, um, I know you talked about those um, regulated occupations and out of that list, we have quite a few. Okay. Um, so we, we touched upon those. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to uh, list the ones that are uh, the regulated ones and maybe what is, what are some of the common steps that a person would have to take and then compare it to those, some of those non-regulated ones if you see yeah. those on the list? Yeah, why don't we do that? Um, uh, I'm just gonna then finish the PowerPoint. I only have like two more slides left and then I'm gonna go uh, to answering all those, all those questions that you just asked. Yes, so um, basically, oh yeah, very good. So I had this slide of questions, but let me just finish this uh, PowerPoint. I think I have shared quite a few tips for success for you guys. Um, we have served over 16,000 clients uh, from 130 different countries, and we have been operating since 2004, helping wow. immigrant professionals. Yes. And um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's been a long journey and, and pretty much uh, all our clients have come to the center um, with the, with, you know, with the lack of hope, right? Uh, I don't have Canadian experience or my English language level is not good enough uh, or um, I, I, how do I become licensed? So, and then, and then they live and they are um, working, they live working hard for accomplishing their career goals. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, just, Quickly uh, sharing a success story, Anesha came uh, from Zimbabwe um, last year in the middle of the pandemic. She came with a 10 month old baby and um, she has a background in business administration. She worked one on one with her career coach 
and uh, she landed a professional job in August. So this is an example of how good uh, the remote offering, offering the services remotely was actually beneficial for her because even uh, she could even join the sessions in the evening, the workshops and the and the one on one career coaching sessions. Um, Oleg is also another um, uh, engineer. He he is now almost uh, finished with his uh, accreditation process. So I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna quit the PowerPoint, and I am gonna go to uh, our website, and I want to show you the occupation the occupations list. And I'm going to pick one from our list, for example, the accountant in the, in the list, right? Or the teacher. Let's pick mm -hmm. the in the class. I hear the, the teacher. That one pops up quite a bit. We've had it, sure. uh, I think, six wow. requests for the teacher. So I think okay. it would be Very good, good. touch so, upon that. Um, before I go ahead and, and uh, share the, the screen uh, for the for the website, I uh, just want to, to let you know that um, the, the, the actual understanding of what are the steps to move forward with your licensing process are going to be carefully uh, studied, displayed, or evaluated with the career coach, right? It, 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 that requires you to have a one-on-one -on -one session to have a clear laid out of what that means for you in particular. So I'm gonna be sharing the, 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 the website one more time. And I wanna show you a specific um, link that is gonna be helpful. So I'm gonna go back to the homepage and I'm gonna click on um, here. Give me one second information on my profession. And this is going to be helpful for you and also for your friends and family members. So here we have answered many questions. You do not need to read all of them, but it's a good start prior to that um, session with the career coach. And I am going to go to the teachers just to give you an example, right? Um, elementary school teacher. And for all the occupations, we have answered these questions. Who is the regulated body responsible for this occupation in Alberta? What are the registration requirements for international elementary school teachers in Alberta? What are the uh, educational requirements? Who is responsible for hiring teachers in Alberta? What training programs are available for immigrant professionals? What are the accepted English language proficiency tests, right? Remember, we talked about uh, your language assessment as an important step. What supports are available uh, for, for internationally educated teachers? What information resources are available? And additional occupational information. So um, I'm not going to go, of course, into all the occupations, but we have done, we have answered all these questions for mm -hmm. um, over 70 occupations on this website. So um, I'm just gonna show you that pathway once again, because this is gonna be homework for all of you guys. <laughs> so you go to our website, you scroll down to the banner, information on my profession, you click there, and then you select uh, the group, right? In this case, I went straight to the education group because I'm looking for the teachers information. And from here, um, I'm choosing the, in this case, elementary school teacher. And then I'm finding all, I'm finding a lot of information is specifically related to that occupation. Um, but this, as I said, this is, this is homework, but I strongly suggest that you still have that conversation with the career coach. I'm gonna stop here and, um, and yeah, if you wanna um, ask questions, um, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer. <laughs> yes, can you talk a little bit about the, we had a question about the medical, the doctors. Were... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah, we, we have uh, quite a few clients who are internationally educated doctors. Um, my understanding from one of my colleagues is that um, Unfortunately, quite a few of the licensing exams have been um, suspended due to the pandemic, right? They, they have been suspended. But um, again, if you are an internationally educated doctor, if you're a, a, a mostly known as um, international medical graduate, the very first step is to meet with a career coach 
and look at the options. Okay, if my plan A is becoming a fully licensed physician in Canada, what does that look like for me? Right? How much time is going to take for me? What are the exams that I need to take? What is my English language required? What is the English language that I have today? And what is it, the one that is required by the by the um, professional association? And um, what are my finances looking like? Can I access uh, some of the services available for immigrant professionals, like microloans, for example? So again, first step is to have a conversation with a career. Because they're also, the, the, it's a very general, it would be having it, just saying a doctor, it would be really difficult for you to say exactly what are the steps that you need to take, because it depends what kind of doctor it is. Yes, definitely. And um, yeah, and um, I'm the... My role at Directions for Immigrants is I'm the, the community liaison officer. So I am here to inform you guys that this service is available, that you can access the service. Uh, you have a, a, now a better idea that uh, this help is available to you. Now, uh, for, for each doctor in the room, uh, the, the story is going to be uh, different in the sense that the when they come to the when they come to the center when they book the appointment uh, with my colleagues uh, the career coaches uh, they're going to be looking at all those aspects that I just mentioned right and and the career coach is going to lay out the step by step uh, what is required from a doctor and and feel free to ask my colleagues uh, what is it that that other um, uh, international medical medical graduates have done in the past what has made them successful, right? And even don't be afraid of asking, um, how about plan B, right? I know that it is really um, a, a more, common, more common idea these days for all of us. We have one plan in our heads and then life turns out differently for all of us. So then what are- You have what to be the, flexible. You have to be flexible and be- Option B still within the healthcare field. What are my options of employment still mm -hmm. within the healthcare field while I work on my accreditation process that, as we all know, is very lengthy and, um, and complicated for doctors. Doctors are on the top of um, how difficult it is, and we have to acknowledge that. So how about those unregulated professions? I know we, well, we had the, uh, some business, I uh, can find my... My list here. We did have some people in business, oh, right? Marketing yeah, marketing and uh, marketing banker. That's uh, right. Yeah, insurance coordinator, um, mm -hmm. uh, quality control auditor. So yes. So for the non-regulated occupations, what will happen is that very likely the conversation with a career coach is going to focus more on the job search aspect. Remember that at Directions for Immigrants, we can help you with one of these two goals or with both with the job search piece and also with the accreditation piece and so for example for our banker in the room or for our marketing professional in the room very likely the conversation is going to focus on employment let's look at what are the skills that you have what is the previous experience uh, that you bring what, what what were those industries that you worked previously in the past and that you could be um, applying for jobs for jobs in the same industry here in Alberta, right? Um, so it's building that profile. It's building that profile that could fit all of those, you know, the, the, the skills and the knowledge and everything that you have. And then where can we apply that here? So it's a really quite successful, uh, I would say, approach, because then you have that great chance of really landing a job in the field that you already, you're already comfortable with. And yeah, it may yeah. take language or it may take... Uh, maybe it's honing your communication skills a little bit mm -hmm. um, yeah so as you said you let so those are great we we may have two clients who both are marketing professionals and then maybe for one client the the gap that is preventing that person from finding employment is the network right we all know that as immigrants when we come here we don't have a huge network huge professional network and we need to start building on that so maybe for that marketing professional, their English skills are fantastic, excellent work experience, excellent post-secondary education. It's just a matter of networking. Or maybe for um, uh, the, the other client who is also a marketing professional, 
maybe that client does need to work a little bit extra on the English language skills, because as we know, not, not just for marketers, but for any, to, to, in order to be able to land a professional job, your English language skills need to be high. And so maybe the career coach is gonna go, okay, let's, we need to work on, the, on your English language skills first. And as soon as you have your English a little bit higher, then we go and focus on the networking piece. And then you have two, di two completely different jobs. That's right. That's right. So we had some questions. I think it was about the English exam. Do you, the, the courses for the English, uh, do you, is that something that you offer or is that something then you would then work with a client and say, okay, this is a place where you can go and give it right. options? Yeah. So, right. Uh, directions for immigrants, we do not offer English language courses or, uh, te or uh, preparation for the English tests. Um, the career coaches will provide you with a list of places where you can go and, and, and um, access education preparation for the English language studies. Um, and that, if, that is gonna be helpful because you will evaluate which, which option is better for you, right? And so um, there are- That's right, that because not, they're all different. They're not all the same, uh, the yeah. places where you can get those, uh, yeah. uh, those yeah. courses, that's right. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to make sure I know we don't have so where it's 801 and I feel uh, yes. I don't feel terrible having to uh, ask people to stay longer. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure out of that list if there's some specific uh, uh, I know yeah. quality control is a bit different, but I'm not uh, like if there there's power line technician we have mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not I sure if there are some uh, professions that maybe you wanted to kind of touch upon and yeah. um, um, I would say for those those of you whose occupation is regulated, uh, definitely be prepared to spend uh, uh, quite some time of the conversation with the career coach on the licensing aspect. And for our our people in the room whose occupation is not regulated, then uh, the conversation with the career coach is going to focus on how do I how do I become a competitive candidate in the in the labor market, right? And how do um, for, how how do I convince an employer that I am a, a very attractive candidate, right? And that, and that I am able to do the job. And you mentioned something uh, when you talked about those uh, edu uh, those regulated professions and, you know, sort of having that, uh, you said membership or, you know, being part of this uh, organization. It's a bit of a new, it's a bit of a newer concept for some of these professions. I know, uh, like from the Ukrainian perspective, so it, it's kind of an interesting topic how that works here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so definitely. And, and that is something that sometimes in some presentations that I, that I do, uh, people get surprised to learn that, for example, uh, a person who graduates from an engineering degree, from an engineering degree with an engineering degree from Alberta uh, and wants to become a, a professional engineer with Apega, they still have to go through the licensing process. So a uh, someone who graduates from a Canadian university still has to go through the licensing process and they have to pay the membership fees and become a member with the professional association and follow the steps, um, very similar to um, a person who is coming from outside of Canada with an engineering degree. So um, I, I mentioned the, the fees because Yes, uh, as, as any other um, plan that you develop for your life, when you are embarking into a, a mission of uh, becoming a licensed professional, that, that is going to imply spending money on, on the membership fees, spending money on the exam fees, going back to the doctors, the exam fees for the, for, for the um, do doctors are, are pretty expensive. So uh, those are aspects that you need to take into consideration. So if, if finances is something that is of your concern, then please bring it up with the career coach because the career coach can bring up uh, uh, several options. Um, right now, there are quite a few non-for-profit organizations in, in Alberta uh, and also in Canada that can help um, immigrant professionals. They can provide micro loans meaning that you apply for, uh, for a micro loan at a very, very minimal uh, interest rate in order to pay for your um, courses, if you need to take courses or for your membership fees or for the exam fees. 
And um, most of those organizations, the main goal is to help immigrant professionals move forward. So the, the method of paying back is pretty flexible. So the career coach at Directions for Immigrants can also help you develop a, a, a plan that includes, should I be applying for those micro loans or not? Mm -hmm. That will depend on your personal situation. Uh, somebody mentioned that Edmonton Public Library provide free uh, English prep courses if you have EPL card and have date for, for an exam. Oh, that's for uh, uh, just a suggestion that somebody made for other participants. Uh, so just, uh, just to wrap it up about the teachers, because we did have quite a few of them asking, can you just uh, say a few words and wisdom or, t or tips? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, so I, I do hear that um, it is not easy for an internationally trained teacher to land here, I mean, in, in, in to pursue the licensing process, right? Um, I, I acknowledge that it is a difficult process. So again, um, I would suggest to those teachers to go to the conversation with the career coach with an open mind. Okay, let's talk about um, plan A. What does it look like for me to try to become a fully licensed teacher in Alberta, right? How much time? What is the English language level that I need in order to um, start the process, in order to have my documents um, assessed and all of that? And then what is the labor market looking like, right? Even if you are not licensed today, what is the labor market for teachers uh, looking like today for any teacher in Alberta? Um, That's right. Yeah. And so that is plan A, right? How much time, how much energy, how much money I will be spending on that. And what are the steps uh, required for me to become a fully licensed teacher in Alberta? Now let's look at plan B. Uh, with my skills, as a, with your skills as an internationally educated teacher, um, all those uh, education skills, communication skills, planning skills, evaluation skills, right? The teachers mm -hmm. have um, an, an, an amazing, um, an incredible uh, set of skills that include evaluation, planning, cre creativity, um, even even uh, budget planning, right? But many, many teachers, even teachers coming from um, areas or schools where money was not abundant and they had to um, uh, build projects with very little money uh, are, uh, can, can even demonstrate, okay, this is, this is what I was able to do back in my home country. So then with the, with the career coach, you will be able to make an inventory of skills, which is something that not everybody um, is capable of doing, right? It's an exploration about what are the skills that I have, that the combination of skills that I have that no one else has out there. And so maybe the plan B for those internationally educated teachers um, will eventually end in, how about working as a facilitator? How about working as a, as a workshop facilitator? As a, as a, uh, uh, I Great don't know, suggestion. As a teacher's assistant or as an educational assistant, or, you know, there are so, and so that is another question for the career coach. Uh, have you, uh, you know, since we have been working since 2004 and we have helped over 16,000 immigrant professionals, I am sure that the career coach will be able to share with you uh, what is it that uh, other teachers has, have done as a plan B. So I strongly suggest that you come to the conversation with an open mind. Okay, this is what I, right. I would like to know, what it mm -hmm. takes for my plan A. And this is, and, and now I would like to explore what it would take for a plan B. And I haven't even thought about a plan B, but how, how would that look like for me? That's right. Well, on that note, I say we, um, I know somebody asked about the uh, accessing services if they're from a different province. I believe that would not be an option, right? You have to be in Alberta to be able to access the service. Yeah, so you, I had you, a, you have to be. That's However, right. If you send us an email to the directions at bowvalleycollege.ca, we may be able to um, direct you to uh, similar services uh, available mm -hmm. in your province where you are um, that serve immigrant professionals. Um, in Excellent. general, in Canada, there are so many organizations that help immigrants move mm -hmm. forward. So I'm sure there is an organization that is gonna be able to help you within your area. Well, thank you so much. There is there is a lot uh, uh, 
there's a lot to to uh, to digest. I think after hearing this and all the option and options, I put the uh, the website, your website, in the chat. I hope people have the still a little bit of time in their evening or maybe another day to just open the tab and then explore what's out there and maybe gain a little bit of a better understanding about those professions and then decide how they uh, decide to, how how they're going to move forward with this. Uh, thank you, Grizel, so much for participating. This is excellent conversation, really great, uh, great topics. I, I really appreciate your time and I hope that our participants enjoyed it. I hope they learned something new and maybe give them a little bit of clarity. I hope that uh, they'll reach out to you and I think that's just an amazing service you provide. I know it's a journey, but um, it's a very much appreciated uh, service. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. And I think you described it very well. And that, that's why we um, titled the presentation at the beginning, Navigate it with us, because it is a journey. We acknowledge that and we, we are here to navigate it with you, because it may be a journey of a couple of months, a year or several years. That's and right. It's not just the reaching out to, uh, you know, an assessment agency that says, well, you need this. Okay, well, where do I take it from here? It sounds a little bit intimidating. So yes. yes, thank you yeah. again. Thank uh, have you. a good uh, have a good evening, everyone. I will now end the session. Uh, please stay warm. Have a cup of tea. Uh, enjoy your indoor time as much as you can. Uh, we'll hope for better weather. Okay. Thank you. Have a good Thanks evening. for the invitation. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank Bye you, Grizel. Bye. Bye.